Okay, we're gonna start diving into our studio now. Um, for those of you who are a bit more familiar, about half the class with R, today is a bit slower. Um, we're just sort of making sure that everyone's on the same starting page. And I think you'll really enjoy our third lecture too about reproducibility, which I think is relevant for everyone to hear no matter how advanced you are in, in data analysis and using R. Um, okay, but, but for this next lecture and actually lab as well, we're gonna sort of dive into the things that we can do with our studio and the benefits of that. Okay, so going to our website yet again, um, you can go to our materials and schedule and you can find the slides here under our studio. All right, so let's get started here. So what exactly is our studio? So R, Ava kind of talked about, is the programming language. And then our studio is this integrated development environment or IDE that we can use to work in R. Um, and we really recommend using it because it's been designed specifically to help you work in R and it can be really nifty. So it helps you write code, it helps make suggestions, it can help you sort of auto-complete your code, remember what arguments there are within a function. If you sort of remember a function name, but you can't remember the entire thing, it's going to help you with that, and we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, it helps you view the output of your code. So if you're just working directly with R, it can be difficult to see plots unless you use additional um, uh, software to, to look at those plots. So our studio is really helpful for that. There are other IDEs that you could use, but again, our studio is specifically designed to help you work with R. It helps you find errors. We'll talk about that. Um, of note, it's not a drop-down statistical tool like Stata, although there are lots of GUI related aspects, meaning like point and click or drop-down menus. Um, so just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, and our studio, it's called our studio because we're working in R, so it's a studio for R. Um, but that also used to be the name of the company that we've been referring to called Posit, which is the one that helps develop the tidyverse. Okay, so again, it makes things a lot easier. It's a wonderful part about using uh, our studio. So it helps with syntax highlighting. So making sure that you have all the parentheses that you need. Uh, the code completion, like I said, and indentation. So if indentation actually matters, it helps you to remember how to do that. Um, it also helps you to figure out where your files are, how many files you have in a particular project. We'll be talking more about that too. Um, and it gives you some information about looking at the data itself, um, looking at plots, zooming into those plots. Um, and so we'll talk more about all of those things when we get to that uh, step. Um, and there's also lots of help, which we're gonna also talk about. All right, so you may see that I've also shared my RStudio. And when you open RStudio, it should look a little something like this. Um, so you're gonna see basically three panes, this like large left pane um, on the, that I'm calling pane one just arbitrarily, um, and then two smaller panes on the right. You might see another pane if you have a file open. Um, we're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, if, you're, if your panes don't look like this, and you wanted to make a change or you just like it in a different way, there's a button that's helpful for sort of specifying how you would like to have this. And so there's this little waffle button with four indentations um, that's the pain button. And so if you select that, you can scroll down to the pain layout and you'll see this result that looks like this. So I have the default layout because that's what I got used to, that's what I like. So you'll see that I have source on top, console on the bottom, environment um, on the top right, and files, plots on the bottom right. So if you want things to look similar to how they are for the instructors and to, to your peers, then it might be a good idea to, to adjust if things are looking different. Um, 
again, if you see something on the left, two panes, that may just be because you have a file open. We'll talk more about that. Also, some people just like things differently. You can do that too. <laughs> Again, so if you want to know what the default layout is, again, you can find it on here um, on the slides. Okay, so the left side right here, this is where most of the magic happens. That's where we're going to be doing most of our work, writing the actual code. On the right side is where we're going to do auxiliary things and sort of look at the output of plots. Um, but in terms of writing code, it's happening here on the left side. Um, when we create objects, uh, recall that Ava talked about objects, which are sort of the things that we're working with in R, and those could be functions that we create, it could be a plot, it could be uh, a vector, a data frame, those are going to show up in the environment when we save them to memory, and we'll talk more about that too um, tomorrow. And then the bottom right is where we're going to see our files, our plots, and where we get help. So you see there's some tabs here, file, plots, help, um, and those are very nifty. Okay, so like I said, some of you might have this fourth pane. In fact, Ava had one earlier when she was sharing her screen. So uh, we're gonna be working mostly in something called an R markdown file. And to create that file, we are going to go to this little button that says new file. It's a white square with a plus sign. And we'll select our markdown. And you'll see this pop up. I don't know if you can see my pop up. Um, good. <laughs> and you don't really need to worry about what it says. You can basically just say, OK. And now you see that I have four panes. So I have two panes now on my left side here. And the new thing that I just opened is this R markdown file, RMD. Um, it's called an untitled one. Um, it says here that it's an R markdown file, has a bunch of information about that. And then this is what was previously here. It's just been squished down. So in case you come back to this pre later, just say OK anytime. Later, you can update the title, but you can also do that afterwards. So pretty much every time, if you want to, uh, for the most part, just say, OK. OK, so now we have our fourth pane here. And this is where we will be mostly doing our writing of code. So the top here that we just opened is called the source or the editor. And that's going to create a static copy of code. And that's super important for reproducibility, which we'll be talking about soon in a second. Um, because of course, if we don't save our code, we might not be able to remember all of it. And so it's good to save it somewhere. So that's why it's a good idea to do most of your writing in the top. Um, you can test things out in the bottom. It's a good place to use as a calculator or things like that. Um, and when we run code, we're going to see that it's going to run through the bottom. Um, but we'll see that a lot more tomorrow when we get into basic R. Um, so this top source editor is where we're going to see um, sort of, especially in our markdown files, not only code, which is written inside these, these gray boxes, which we'll talk more about, but also information about the code. And so that's also really nice because you can sort of describe what you're doing in your code. If you really like uh, shortcuts, um, we'll, we'll talk about these a bit more. But if you wanted to run code, you can use Command Enter and Control Enter um, to run a line of highlighted code. We'll talk about that later. All right, so again, the console is where code is executed. You'll see things show up there. Um, and it's good for interactively testing code, but code is not saved on your disk. So don't rely on it. So for example, I might say, I'm just doing what happens to be in the code that's by default in our markdown file. So I'm gonna look at this data set called cars and I'm gonna make a summary of it. Cars comes with our 
um, there's a lot of data sets within R that we can play with, which is really nice. So you can see here that I can run the code down here and see an output. So this is where we might test things. Um, but I also can work with it up here, which we'll talk more about in a second. So there's all sorts of buttons <laughs> and things that are really fancy that you can do in our studio. If you get really excited about it and you wanna take it further, uh, there's this cheat sheet in our slides. You can take go to this link and, and check out all of these fancy things that you can do in our studio. Um, but for now, we're just gonna cover the basics and that should take you through everything you need in the course. Okay, so our markdown files look different from scripts. You're probably familiar with what a script is, which is basically just a set of code. Um, and so scripts are, are empty, they're naked. There's nothing in them when you open a script file. And notice that I did this in the same way. I went to the new file button and I just clicked R script. Whereas here in my R markdown file, I have a bunch of other stuff. So um, although you probably used scripts or heard of other people using scripts, um, and they can be really useful for certain circumstances. Generally, for public health research, we're going to recommend using uh, our markdown files instead, um, because they're much more superior in allowing you to check your code um, and create these really useful reports for others uh, to look at your code. And we'll see more about that in a second. OK, we're going to talk a little bit about these other panes. So we've got our environment at the top here. Again, when we start saving things to memory, which like, so here, um, say I wanted to save this, I could call this some cars and I name it that. And we're gonna learn tomorrow how we assign objects, but it's, I could use this little arrow sign. Um, I'm just gonna copy paste this. And now I see something showed up in my environment. And so it just shows me what I've what I've put into memory. Or what I've sort of saved temporarily to use in this for in this uh, session of R. Um, so basically, what did I read in? What can I use now in my analysis? There's also a history tab here. I almost don't want to tell you that it's there, but you're going to know because it says history. Um, but basically, I don't ever use it um, <laughs> because I typically would be saving my code up here. Um, and that way, I don't have to deal with this because it's not that useful. Um, you know, if I scroll through this, it could be like, oh, dear, was it was it this line that I wanted or, or was it? Oh, I'm not quite sure exactly when I did what. And so it's only sort of helpful. Um, so I recommend not really relying on it. <laughs> um, but I will say the up key um, can help you to find code that you just ran. So lost my R studio here. Um, so say I wanted to run this again, I can just click the up arrow down here in my console and I'll see the command that I just ran. So it can be really useful if say I wanted to adjust this and I was like, oh, no, sorry, I didn't mean to do the summary of cars. I just wanted the actual cars data set. I could change it. OK, so then um, some of the other panes that are useful are pretty much down here in this bottom right corner. So files is going to help us see where we are on our computer. So I'm inside a huge directory tree for my um, my files. So. That's where I am here. Um, this is where I'm going to see plots. Packages helps to see what packages you actually have installed. Um, the help tab here is going to help us get help. Git is for version control if you're interested in that. We're not going to cover that in the course, though. Um, and then we're not really, this can help you to view data, but we're not going to really talk about those tabs. OK, so I'm actually going to have us um, not really do the lab quite yet. Um, so all this is first for the activity is 
is to make sure that we have our studio going and we have the file that we're going to need for the lab. And then we're going to talk more about our markdown files before we uh, jump into it ourselves. So basically, but we're going to do just a few things. We're going to download the file that we need for the lab at the website um, and then find it on our computer and try to open it in our studio. And so for some people, this is a challenge because they're not really aware of where their downloads are. If that's the case, you can click on one of these video links and we'll put those in the chat as well um, so that you can figure out where your downloads are because that's going to be important. You'll see that if you're on a Mac, it'll it'll probably be just a preview of it in the in the left corner. And I'll, I'll show that right here. So if I go to the materials and schedule, um, and now I'm into the R Studio Lab, I click here. Uh, like Ava showed, it's going to show up here. If you have, I happen to have uh, be using this browser, um, and I have a Mac. I'm using Chrome. Things might look different for you, so that's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, if I double click it, it's going to automatically open on my computer in my R Studio. Um, but that might not be the case for everyone. We have lots of different operating systems and things happening. So, um, just wanted to take a moment and, and work on that. Um, and then once we have everyone sort of on the same page, we'll go a little bit further. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of a break for us to sort of get settled with that. If you're already good to go, um, you can take a few minutes to stretch again. Um, but otherwise, if you're having any troubles, please let us know in the chat and we'll take just a few minutes. Again, if you're really, really struggling, like you haven't installed R or you're struggling with installing our studio, don't worry. Uh, we're going to have extra time at the end of class to go through that. We'll have a more interactive activity soon. Okay, so again, uh, so these R markdown files, they're going to be called RMD files by some people, and, and they have this um, suffix at the end of the file name. Um, they help generate these really cool reports that will include not only your code, but also the output of your code, which is really great because it helps you to test to make sure that your code's actually working the way that you um, expect. And so you can kind of think of them as these fancier scripts. Um, so it also allows you to have all this other text to describe your code. Um, and you can create a bunch of different file types. The default is HTML, which is great because you can make interactive things. You can have links and um, interactive plots, all sorts of fancy things. Um, but you know, sometimes you'll have collaborators that might want a Word document or a PDF, and you can also do that too. Um, We'll, we'll show you how that works. So again, to create an R markdown file, if you haven't already, um, uh, which we'll, we'll do later, is, is you know, press this plus button and, and go to the R markdown button. OK, so inside our R markdown files, we're seeing these gray boxes. And that's very different from our scripts. And so what are these gray boxes? I have lost my R Studio. Here we go. <laughs> um, so if we just open one an, a random R markdown file, we'll see a box every every time. It's going to say summary cars because that's just the default. And so this is what's called an R chunk, and that's where I can run a little bit of code. So we don't want to put all of our code in one chunk. Um, it's good to sort of test out the output of little pieces of code. Um, so I can press this play button and run that chunk up here to get a preview of what the what the code actually does. Um, and again, if you're interested in, in using shortcuts, you can just highlight the code that you want to run. Um, and then you can use these shortcuts, control enter or command enter. Uh, to run, evaluate the code um, in, in the console here. So anytime you run a chunk, it's going to execute the code and you'll, you'll see generally this preview like we just showed right below the chunk. Um, and we'll see that the code is written out also in the console. Um, but sometimes that's really annoying <laughs> for people. 
and they only want it to show up in the console. Um, if you don't like that, you can go to um, the edit tab. I can't really show you my edit tab, I don't think, but you go up to the top of your R Studio and you click on edit and then scroll down to preferences and R Markdown and you can unclick this so that you don't have your inline preview. Um, so I know Ava personally does not like it. A lot of students don't like it. I'm really used to it, so I don't dislike it. Um, and yeah, so you won't see this anymore. It'll just do the output down here. All right, but the main thing that we really want to do with these RMD files is create these cool reports. And so the way that we do that is we press this knit button. And it's going to pop up a little window about what do you want to call this, because I this is a new RMD file. I'm going to say yes, whatever. We can call it whatever. Um, can you see my window that popped up? We cannot. <laughs> when that happens. Um, well, that's all right, because I have a version here. <laughs> so since you can't see my pop-up, if you were to see my pop-up, um, or you did this yourself, you would see this beautiful report um, that's called Untitled. It has the date, um, whatever the date happens to be at the time, and um, you know all this stuff that typically shows up in an R Markdown file. And so you can modify this and create these beautiful reports to share with others and um, to execute your code and look at what what um, maybe an update in your data changes your plots with and that sort of thing. All right, and uh, oh, just a side note, if you wanted to not make an HTML version and you wanted to do the PDF or Word, you would just click one of these. So you just click this little downward button and then select the other options. Okay, but we're gonna need to create new chunks if we're writing new um, RMD files. And so to do that, we could select where we wanna be and we can press this little insert chunk button. And so here I've just hovered over this and it tells me that's an insert a new code chunk. And so I can click on R and make that happen. Again, if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can instead use these shortcuts where I is for insert. So it's command option I for Mac and control I for Windows and Linux. But you don't need to worry about that if you're not into shortcuts, just use this little button. And so you'll notice when it does that, it creates this little like tick structure and these curly brackets and R, which is telling R Studio that this is gonna have some R code inside of it. That's what the R is for. There's a really, really important and helpful button and it's called the pre run all previous chunks button. And it looks like this. And it took me a while to discover this um, back in the day. And oh my goodness, it's so helpful. So if say you're working on some code and you've already done all of these preliminary steps in your analyses, um, and then you're, you're testing something new out, you don't wanna have to press each individual chunk to get to this point, that would take a long time. So you can just press this nice little run all chunks above button. Again, I just hovered over this and it, and it showed me what it does. And so if I click that here, it's only, it's not gonna run this chunk, but it's gonna run any of the chunks that are above it. There are some fancier things we can do in our reports. If we want a chunk to not show or not show messages, um, sometimes we'll get lots of messages for things that make our reports look really messy. So if we wanna change that, we can click on this little, um, modified chunks button and there's all sorts of things we can do here. So most importantly, it's we can decide if we want to show the output only or if we want to show the code and the output. Sometimes if we have tons of code, it's maybe overwhelming. Um, or maybe we don't want to show it at all. Maybe it was something we were testing out for ourselves and we're not really um, ready to share that with a collaborator or something like that. So I just wanted you to be aware that there are options to do that. Um, and again, most importantly, it's usually just like whether you wanna show the output or show the code or only the output. 
All right, and then one other really nice feature about writing code in our studio is that if I make a mistake, sometimes it takes a little second. <laughs> Here we go. Um, we can see that R has detected that I did something probably wrong. And so it's saying that um, I have an unexpected token, which happens to be my parentheses. I have an extra parentheses here. And so I can delete that. Similarly, say I don't close it, it's also going to, to tag that. Again, it takes a little bit of a second. And it's important to note that sometimes you have an error earlier in your code than when our studio actually thinks the error exists. So um, don't rely on it, but it is a helpful tool. Again, if you're really into shortcuts, there's some other helpful shortcuts. So if you wanted to, um, we've already talked about these, but if you wanted to go from um, your console to the, so console down here to the script or editor, you can go back and forth using uh, shortcuts. And there, there's more if you wanna go to this link, which is also on our website um, in the resource tab. There's more shortcuts here. Okay, so just so it's extremely clear <laughs> about where we're gonna be putting our code, um, it's gonna be, you can test code in the console. So we can test it out down here. Here we're checking the class of something called Iris. We'll talk more about what these um, what class means and what this function does. Um, but I'm running some code here down in the console, but by and large, you know, you're going to want to put your code inside these chunks inside the R markdown files for the labs that we're working on. So make sure that you don't put it above the chunk. Sometimes students get confused about that. It really needs to be inside of a gray chunk for our studio to recognize it. All right. And then one of my favorite aspects about um, our studio is it has lots of helpful information about uh, writing code and getting documentation. So if, for example, I didn't know what class was, I can start to write it and sort of hesitate. And then our studio whoop, is gonna uh, give me a preview about what it means. So it shows me what package it comes from. It comes from the base. R package, so it just comes with R. Basically, it's not an extra package that I have to download. Um, and it it tells me what this what this function does. Um, but I can also get additional help by looking at the help pane here. And I can say class, I can type in and I'll get information about, about this function and, and possible uses and what the arguments mean, lots of details. Um, importantly, I can also get information about the version of the package too. Um, so sometimes you know the name of a package or function and you can you can do something with a question mark oops lost my studio again <laughs> um so i could also do this similarly by looking up class let's do something else so notice that the help tab automatically went somewhere else. So now it's looking up plots. So I don't have to go over to the tab if I don't want to. I can just stay over here. Um, and it's given me some options about what plot might actually be. And I could click on those to get the documentation. Um, you might see people use a double question mark. And this is for packages that you haven't loaded in yet. Um, and then you can you know, ask about a package and see information about it. I already have tidyverse, but um, it'll give me information about the tidyverse and I can find out. Here I can come to a, a, a paper about it and a vignette. So that can be really helpful. 
All right. So in summary, R Studio makes working in R a lot easier. So it's very much recommended. And for this class, we kind of require that you actually do that. <laughs> Um, the editor is where we're going to keep our static copy of our code in our R Markdown files and generally want to be writing code there because we can save what we've done. Um, the console is where we could test our code, but generally don't uh, suggest that you do that. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you're working through something, you might do that. Uh, our Markdown documents are super helpful, especially for reproducibility and collaboration. We're going to talk more about reproducibility in a second. Um, the code goes in the gray boxes and the green play button is how we can run the code chunks. Um, and we can modify them in how we show them in a report if we want to do something fancy. Um, and so with that, we're going to go on to our lab. Um, and so you can click this button if you haven't already, you know, in our last lab, we basically set it out all up. So, um, but typically we're going to see labs on the summary slide for our, um, for our lectures, and then we can click on them to download the lab that we want to go to.